Hi everyone, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA. And on this video, we're gonna be discussing um, our task list five series that we have. Um, and today it's gonna to be B-6, which is defining and providing examples for positive and negative punishment contingencies. If you haven't seen the previous video, please go ahead and check them out. Uh, we've made them very quick and detailed just to clarify the previous task list that we have. And once you have that information, it's gonna make it that much easier for you to catch up to where we are right now and you'll have those basic foundations that you need for studying. <laughs> Let's discuss punishment. Don't worry, it is not as scary as you think. Uh, when discussing punishment, we're really talking about a stimulus that immediately follows a response, um, and that results in similar responses occurring less. Uh, basically, punishment makes future behaviors less likely to occur. So punishment can occur in two forms. So it comes in either negative or positive punishment. Let's go ahead and talk about each. Positive punishment is a stimulus change where the consequence, so what occurs after the response, was added. For example, let's say that you go to a restaurant and you park in a handicapped spot. You will be presented with a ticket for illegally parking there, especially if you don't have the placard. Uh, this makes it less likely that you're going to be parking there in the future. So again, that's something that was added to that particular behavior that you did, meaning you parked in a handicapped spot when you weren't supposed to. Now, with negative punishment, this is a stimulus where a um, particular stimulus was removed. So for example, let's use the same experience of parking in the handicapped spot. And this time, it's your car that was towed. So your car was withdrawn or removed from this particular experience. The removal of your car makes it less likely that you're gonna park in that spot in the future. While these are examples of um, things that happen within our daily lives of how we can receive positive and negative punishment, within ABA, um, us as clinicians really don't like to use punishment procedures unless it's absolutely necessary. We make sure that we use reinforcement first before we get into punishment procedures. And as far as clinicians go, we discuss it with caregivers of that individual to make sure that they're okay with this. This was a lot of information in a short span of time, so I really hope that it's helpful for you in your future studying. Um, and like I said, you can always watch those other videos. They're very short and concise and detailed. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Otherwise, please like, share, and subscribe to us here at Teach Me ABA. Happy studying. <laughs>